Hi and welcome to another DTA screencast and today we're going to be looking at the characteristics of the USA and its sports. I've got Joe with me today who's going to uh, help out. Hi, yeah. Uh, so we'll get started straight away then. So if I had to say USA to you Joe, what characteristics do you think uh, you would associate with that? I would say it's one of the largest countries uh, in the world yeah. and also probably say the number of states it has, it's got lots of states. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. So the other thing is it's a young country, uh, relative to ours that is, and uh, as you rightly pointed out, it's one of the largest countries. It's got its a very rich mineral resources, so it can produce its own uh, goods, and 51 autonomous states. And what autonomy means is that they look after themselves, so they're, they're separate, so, but we'll look at that in a little bit. And also it's a, a capitalist country, and again, we, we're just going to look at that in a second. So uh, a capitalist country is, or a capitalist approach, is the ability for you to actually create your own wealth. And the idea that everything can be bought or sold, so everything kind of has a price. So every individual is striving to create their own wealth in that country, where here we've got the class system, which, uh, which gives a slightly different approach. So the question I'll ask Joe is, like, how do you think that would actually affect sport in the USA? So sport could maybe become like a kind of business. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So it can be sort of seen as a, a commodity, something that you can buy and sell. So we'll just look at some stats here. Um, for the NFL, each one of the teams, that's the National Football League, that each one of the teams is worth approximately a billion dollars. And for the Major League Baseball, it's about 605 million so what, what team do you support, Joe? Uh, Chelsea. Never mind, never mind. So um, Chelsea's probably worth around about 250 to 300 million if you sold the entire thing. So you can see that the NFL teams have a, a vastly superior amount of financial attachment to them. So each one of the, the potential sports is seen as a commodity to buy or to sell. Now, um, if we're talking about the autonomous states, how do you think that's going to impact on sports? Maybe not the, the high level, but let's say recreational or amateur sports. Uh, it must be difficult to organise fixtures. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you've got Great Britain, Great Britain fits into New York State, it's, uh, it's very hard for people to carry out fixtures. Um, and imagine trying to do that across the entire country. It's just not possible, unless you're at the absolute elite level, um, because because of the financial implications of that. The other thing is as well, is because you've got those autonomous states, each one that works for themselves, you have a decentralized system. So over in this country, we've got the national curriculum. So let's say uh, in our country, each county has the similar approach to sports. But uh, in America, each one of the states looks after itself. So say, for example, Nevada is not really that fussed about sports. You may not get a very good sporting experience in that, in that state. However, if you're up in Michigan, and I know that Michigan State University and the colleges up there really rate their uh, sports, so therefore you're going to get a better experience. So that decentralized system does have an impact on your physical activity. Okay, Joe, so could you name a couple of sports that you think originated in America? I would say probably baseball and maybe basketball. Baseball and basketball. Okay, well... One of those is um, absolutely right, and that's uh, basketball. Um, but baseball, no. Oh, okay. No, but um, lacrosse is the other one that originated in, in the States, and that came from the Native Americans, and it was a game they used to play, but um, the rules have been changed slightly. And the other ones, baseball, actually originated in Europe, oh, right. along with American football, that originated in rugby and they just changed the rules to suit uh, the characteristics that they, they wanted. So we're going to look at the nature of the sport in the, the USA and uh, we'll just focus on American football uh, to, to use as an example, but it works for all sports. So if you had to look at that picture there, Joe, what kind of characteristics do you think you would need to be able to play if indeed you want to? I mean, by the look of that, he's getting smashed, so probably a lot of courage is needed to play American football. Yeah, yeah, courage... Um, and probably quite physical, it is very physical, so you probably need uh, physicality as well. And 
the reason the Americans like this game so much is they, they think it personifies this idea of a frontier spirit. Have you ever heard that term before? I haven't, no. So what that's about is the, the settlers from the east of America who moved across to the west to find new lands and new lives in the wild west needed to have similar characteristics. So for example, courage, uh, endeavor, which is effort, and also this physicality. So they see this frontier spirit within their sports. Okay. So what we've got at the moment is a combination of this capitalist nature and we've also got this idea of a frontier spirit as well. Um, have you ever heard of this term before? It's not the winning, it's the taking part. Yes, heard about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's quite, it's quite an English approach quite an old style approach but in America unfortunately they have a different attitude they have this one here have you ever heard of this term before oh, I have, no I haven't seen that winning isn't everything it is absolutely the only thing wow so um, you can see that, that that's slightly different to, to the attitude that you could perceive in our country and it was originated by this guy here and his name was Vince Lombardi he was an American football coach who instilled this attitude of winning is the absolute goal and this is now part of the American culture within their sports. It is truly about the winning and not the taking part. So what we've now got is a combination of this capitalist nature, everything can be bought and sold, this idea of a frontier spirit, courage, endeavor, uh, and then we've also got this Lombardian ethic, as it's now known, of winning isn't everything, it is the only thing. So that is in essence the nature of the sport in America. Okay, so now we've got this combination of the capitalist nature, the historical frontier spirit and this Lombardian ethic. And how that actually impacts on sport is that lots and lots of people want to go and watch. Imagine you've got loads of people making loads of effort, loads of uh, courage, very physical things. Lots of people want to go and watch. And because of this capitalist nature, people sell this as a product. So lots of people go and watch. And there's also potential for lots of sponsorship, if you imagine all those people are going to watch. Another thing that it also gives us is um, high level, really, really motivated coaches. You imagine these guys here are looking to uh, instill that winning is everything ethic uh, within each one of their sports. So with that, they also have to give lots of support for each one of the athletes. And what we're going to look at then is the positive and negative impact of this attitude towards sports. So if you could try and think of maybe um, a, a negative. What do you think would be a negative? Um, maybe only a few sports would get funding because the funding uh, is put, so much money is put into those specific sports that maybe other sports get left out due to the funding. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really, really good point. And um, other things could be the loss of the traditional values. If it's all about the winning, then not about the, 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 the original spirit of taking part. So that might be another issue. Um, and then our sports stars maybe become mobile adverts. So you could say that David Beckham was more to do with his marketability than his actual playing ability. Mm -hmm. Maybe at the beginning of the career that was a little bit different, yeah. yeah? What about positives then? What do you think would... Well, the funding that the main sports did get, and they probably get millions of funding, so the facilities would be high, you know, and the stadiums would probably be one of the best in the world. Yeah, that's, that's spot on. So high quality facilities you saw the stadium that we looked at a second ago high quality coaches and therefore it raises the standard of the people that actually take part and that's why if you think about it, the americans are the best at a lot of the sports that they yeah. take part in yeah and the other thing that it also gives them in in america if you think about this um this capitalist idea that anything can be bought and sold and the, the potential for raising the standard is that these people can really earn millions and millions and millions of dollars. So comparatively, the students that go to the colleges in America compared to the students over here, um, they have a different approach to their sports. It's this high facilities, very, very professional approach. And what that gives them is the potential to achieve what's known as the American dream. And it's the belief that prosperity is linked to your ability and, and hard work. So if you really, really push yourself, it doesn't matter what class you are, it just uh, matters how you perform. And we don't really have that over here. Um, so over here, it's based on class. Over there, it's, it's actually not. 
Um, have you ever heard of this term American dream before and this idea of prosperity before? Yeah, is that the uh, rags to riches where, you know, it doesn't matter if you haven't got a lot of money, you can go from one class and literally become a professional even if you don't earn a lot of money kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So there's um, there's a film about um, uh, with Will Smith and his son in called The Pursuit of Happiness and it's actually uh, this guy uh, personifying the, the idea of the American dream that anybody can achieve and eventually he, he succeeds. There's also one on sports which is the, it's called Seabiscuit and it's about this young guy who manages to overcome all the odds, that, that idea of the frontier spirit, and achieve what's known as the American dream, so wealth and, and, and happiness. And, and that's uh, echoed in the draft system, where students can move from a college and then they get uh, accepted into uh, professional sports. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to look at is a really good example that um, personifies the, the idea of America and American sports. So have you ever seen um, Super Bowl? I did, I saw it this year. Yeah, All right, pretty amazing. Good? Yeah. All right, so uh, this would seem relatively uh, familiar to you. There's um, hundreds and thousands of people that uh, get to go to the stadium and around in the car parks and they go and watch it there. Have you got any idea what the viewing figures were? Was it, I think, was something billion, wasn't it? It was, it was 1.8 billion people actually watched um, that single game. And um, what would she actually have to do with the national? Was that the national anthem? Was it? She she actually performed in the halftime show. The halftime show is actually as long as the game officially is played. Oh, wow. So if we're talking about this idea of being a, a vehicle, a, a commercial vehicle, now they're bringing in these huge stars to to make it more of a show because they know that they can they can sell it, and and that's what they're generally trying to do. Um, just out of interest, then. Um, how long do you think, or how much do you think a 30 second advert would cost? Uh, I don't know, 900,000? 900,000, it's not too bad. This advert here played for 30 seconds, it's the, the one who thinks oh, he's yes. Darth Vader. And this one actually cost 3.5 oh million God. dollars. For 30 seconds? For 30 seconds, absolutely. So what this does is it personifies the idea that sport can be sold and used for commercial gain. Okay? Okay. And I think that, that, that sums it up quite well. All right, well, thanks very much, Joe, and um, speak to you next time. Thank you.